inside another dimension, face battling barbarians and evil magic on a quest for adventure in a maze of monsters. Once you get into it, you'll never be the same. Hero Quest. Now with two new adventure packs, the legend grows. Hi, welcome back to None of Your Mother's Hobbies. Today we are doing the first of our mythic heroes or mythic characters. Uh, it's the Warlock, as voted popular demand. Uh, the Warlock is like a little halfling guy. It's kind of interesting. Uh, it's probably my favorite out of all of the new little mythic sculpts. Uh, I'm not really a fan of many of them, but hey, this one's starting strong. So let's get painting. All right, first things first, we're gonna hit up this dress. The bottom layer is Basilicatum Gray. It's a dark kind of under petticoat thingy, whatever it is. And we're gonna hit that with Basilicatum because we don't want it to be black. It doesn't need to be too dark, just dark enough. So all of the underskirt is gonna be this color. And don't forget you can do underneath the skirt as well to just deepen darken shadows and get all that lost down there. Uh, black Templar here for the booties. And also we're gonna use that on the hair. You see here, I'm avoiding this little braid. That's not because we're not gonna paint it black. It's just because when we're using contrast, friendly reminder, we should look to paint in blocks to avoid pooling. So anywhere that you can get a little segment or section separated away, uh, do that as it'll help you avoid lots of messes. Coming in here with a dry brush of gray sear, avoiding our usual white or wraith bone because we just want to bring this up as, you know, gray. Gray sear is a pretty nice, cool gray, off gray. Um, I use it for a lot of things. It's got good coverage, and in this case, we're using it to just brighten up that underskirt. Don't forget about that little bracer or shirt or bracelet thingy. Maybe it's a shirt. All right, star of the show for this dress, it's Blood Angels Red. So just paint the dress. Uh, the majority of it is gonna be this red. Uh, any of the little folds and whatnot, get in there, get that crunchy detail. Paint it all red. Go around, take your time. You do not want to ruin your beautiful underdress work, that dark undercoat. Uh, you don't wanna ruin that, so paint within the lines uh, and, and just do your best. Gonna get this little scarf thingy and this little, I guess the wrap from the scarf. Picking out those little details. She's also got these cross wraps that go all the way from the front to the back and a big X. So make sure you get those on the front and back. Just loop it around. You know what we're doing. We're using that dollar store white. It looked so good on those capes. We use it on freaking everything now. Well, you know, within reason. But we used a lot. It looks pretty good. It's cheap and easy and uh, really, really quick. So you're gonna put that on all of the uh, red dress. And we're doing that kind of out of order from layering because, well, everything's white right now. Don't forget to hit the hair. We're gonna hit it a little heavier than we normally would, and we're not gonna put Null Noil on. You'll see why later, but just know that you can hit it a little heavier and not have to worry about it. Gorgruntra? Gor, gor, Gorgruntra? Gorgruntra fur. It's the more reddy, orangey brown out of the contrast line. Uh, and here you'll notice that I notice um, I missed some of the red. And so just keep an eye out for stuff like that. And, you know, don't be scared to come back to it and fix it. But uh, yeah, so all this little kind of, I guess buff jacket or jerkin material, kind of stuff that would be on a doublet. Um, that's all gonna be this kind of warm brown color. And here we're doing it inside the little crisscrossy. It's kind of her under shirt, like a doublet, female doublet, ladies doublet.
Now, admittedly here, I use snakebite leather and I could have used or chosen a different brown. If you wanted to choose something darker or even go with black to make it really stand out against that gore rentifer, be my guest, it would probably look really good. Uh, I probably should have used something like wildwood or cygor brown, but uh, I ended up going with snakebite. It was just my first go-to. You know, I like this one, it's for a lot of leather. Uh, so what I ended up doing to make it stand out was using it as a additional shadow. So I started to paint that just underneath things like the pouches, and you can see here the bottom of uh, her little belt, just to add some extra shadow. And don't forget that book and bottle in the back. But uh, that'll help make it pop and stand out from the Gorgonta, if you go around the way that I went. Element Flesh for our skin. There is no gold on this miniature, so it's only skin. Just hit that one hand, the face, the ears, and I believe there's like a little, little squidgy elbow bit. Yeah, right there. Hit all those parts. All right, here comes the fun part, the green glowy magic. We're using Mantis Warrior Green for a nice lemony lime green. Make it look really fun glowy magic. And we're gonna use that for her crystal dagger as well as her magic warlock hand. We got some fiddly little bits here with the book and the bottle. We're using Talazar Blue for the bottle. Just gonna use it as a nice little, you know, blue bottle color, like a like a cartoony glass bottle. And then the end in yellow for our book color, just to give it some different color popping. All right, here we go. We're using gun metal on our belt buckle. We didn't do basilicanum on that because why bother when you can just slather on the snake bite and everything around it will blend. So null oil gloss our usual metallic treatment. And moving on here to the flesh. Cadian flesh tone is what we're using, just to clean up any splotches and even out the tone. Kids left flesh here for our first real identifiable highlight. And just like we normally do, put that on, you know, two thirds of the miniature going up. You know, all the parts that are gonna get hit by the light. So forehead, cheeks, nose, and then back of the hand, maybe a thumb or a finger or some knuckles. Pallid Witch Flesh for our super duper glossy skin sparkly highlights. The ones that make them really ping pop and whatever else. <laughs> Make it so that you can really see it. Make it so they stand out. We're gonna use that for the nose, the cheeks, forehead, business as usual. Don't forget little knuckles and whatnot. You wanna make those faces pop. That's the most important part of the miniature. Here we are, Wraith Bone. Remember, this is a crystal dagger. So we're gonna use the Wraith Bone on this to do edge highlighting. Not a huge fan of edge highlighting, but in this case, makes a lot of sense. It's crystal. What better way to make it look jagged and crystalline than to do edge highlighting? And just do some little dabs and dips on the hand here. Uh, you don't have to be really too neat. You can even just drag the, the brush across and do some kind of rough dry brushing there too. Coming in here with the dollar store white, just to make those little cracks and edge highlights pop that much more. You're gonna do the same thing here on the hands. Just make that glowy green hand stand out a little more. You know, make that magic bright. We're also gonna use that white do some detail on the bottle. 
right? Make it look shiny. Just uh, paint in some little shines around the curves of the bottle. And we're gonna use that white one more time on the hair. And this is what I meant about having the hair not be too uh, worried about the, the dry brush on there of the white because we're gonna add some, some white, like, kind of spooky Halloween hair. <laughs> so yeah, that's why we didn't have to worry about the dry brush there. Here we go with our chrome. Just make that belt buckle pop. Ping, 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 it's so shiny. And adding on our normal base treatment. Paint, texture paint, dry brush, shade, and another dry brush. And there you have it. That's the Warlock, another miniature down in the Hero Quest series. I uh, hope you guys liked that. I think it came out really cool. This is, like I said, starting off, probably one of my favorite sculpts out of those little mythic heroes, the three that came with the pre-order. Um, probably my favorite initial sculpt. Really digging it. I uh, hope you guys did too. Let me know in the comments down below if you were lucky enough to get these miniatures for your hero quest collection as well and if you're going to paint them how are you going to paint them you're going to paint them up like this i uh, hope you guys are following along give this one a like a subscribe if you haven't hit the little bleeps and the bloops and the bells and the whatnot uh and we'll continue going uh based on popularity from the poll our next one is the druid those of you who wanted the bard you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer but hey we got a lot to look forward to so with that i'll see you in the next one bye bye